Hello everybody, it's Linda, and here is the tutorial for my altered canvas that I promised uh, to do a couple of weeks ago. And uh, this is the canvas that we'll be making. And um, I hope you find some of the techniques and embellishments and stuff inspirational. I have used Wildcat Crafts flowers and uh, this is a handmade rose that I've gotten from Annie Miss Garden Grove. Thank you so much, Annie. But all of the rest of the flowers, they are from Wildcat Crafts. I will provide the item numbers and links below in the description box. And this little bird was cut out from some ephemera from Ephemera's Vintage Garden. And these are just metal embellishments from eBay sellers and this little clock here and this one is from Wildcat Crafts and I'll link to that below and this lace is given to me by my friend Annie and the pearl strand here is from Wildcat Crafts as well and this is just some fabric netting and the rest you'll get to know along the way so I hope you'll enjoy the tutorial I'll do my best to explain to you how this was created and I hope you will make your own altered canvas and do a video response and link it to this video to add to the inspiration for other people looking for inspiration and ideas to do their own altered mixed media canvas. So enjoy. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. I have chosen a canvas board that's my background and it's approximately seven by nine inches and um, my son has already painted on this but he never finished his painting and it, it was years ago so I'm using this and I'm just going to paint it over it and cover it with gesso you can also use white paint I'm leaving it to dry and then I'll do another coat. So while my canvas is drying, let's talk a little bit about the image we're going to use. Um, I'm going to use this image here. And uh, this is from Magic Moonlight Images and I'm putting a link in the description box below. So if you don't have an image you want to use, then go there and find and find a, an image. Um, this is from a, a set of images and the set looks like this and i'll link to this set as well in case you want to use any of these gorgeous images so it will be easy for you to find um, but i didn't want to keep it this small so this is an a4 sheet of paper and because of that i just edited my uh, sheet of images to, in half so that when I printed, it came out like this. Okay. <clears throat> um, I don't know if you know how to, to do that yourselves. So I will uh, do a blog post on this and I will then uh, just uh, post this sheet um, with this size images so that you can just download it to your computer and print it. Okay. So, um, I printed this on um, 170 gram paper, printer paper. And if you don't have a heavyweight printer paper to print your image on, then just print it on regular paper, a thin one, and then just back it with some cardstock to give it a little bit more strength. to see okay so this is what it looks like after i've cut it so now i'm just going around the edge using my sharpie 
permanent marker with a chisel tip because that's easiest. If you're planning to do a canvas with mostly whites and cream colors, then don't use your black pen because that will look a little bit too hard on your background. Of course, if you started out using a white canvas board with no paint on it before, then you just need a, a one coat of gesso and you're done. So now while I'm waiting for the canvas to dry, I'll just show you what I do to create this background effect here, okay? Uh, I'm going to use a die cut paper from uh, Kane Company, which looks like this. It's a 12 by 12 paper, and I'll just use a part of it. If you don't have this kind of a die cut paper i'm sure you got a doily or something then or just uh, use your die cut machine if you have one and and just uh get some die cuts uh to to glue them down so we're going to mud podge or glue this down to our white background canvas or canvas board okay okay so now my canvas is dry and as you can see, there are a little, little dents in it from the, the painting that was already on it. But that doesn't matter at all because I'm going to make the background uh, pretty texturized anyway. So, <clears throat> and also you can see some of the, the old paint shining through. And that also doesn't matter because I'm going to put some color on top of this. So now let's go to the next step and add this die cut paper. <clears throat> As you can see, by the way, this uh, this die cut paper has got some script on it. And if you want your die cut paper, if you don't have the same one, if you want it to be a little bit like this, you can, for instance, if you're using a doily, just stamp it. <clears throat> Sorry. And you'll get the that effect. But use uh, stays on ink or some ink that doesn't smear because you're going to mod podge over it. Okay. To glue this down, you can use any kind of uh, gel medium. doesn't matter if it's heavy or not so heavy, as long as you manage to get this stuck to your canvas or canvas board. <clears throat> I'm just putting down a generous amount so that it will adhere properly. Okay, then <clears throat> I'm just placing this and then going over it to make sure it adheres. And here is a stent. <clears throat> and it's um, it's a good thing to work a little bit quickly so that it doesn't dry for you. If you're using a doily, just be a little bit more gentle because doilies will tear more easily than this paper does. Okay, so I'm leaving it to dry and once it's dry, I'll just check and see that it's all mud podged down securely. And if it isn't, I'll just go over and secure the rest using the same kind of mud budgy. So now it's dry enough for me to cut around the edges. I need to adhere it.
leave this to dry and then we'll be ready to go with the rest um i'm going to use a color spray i'm going to use this color wash because this will match the color on my uh, image and this is lettuce and you can use uh, dilution sprays or uh, you can use lindy samkang or tattered angels whatever as long as it has the color that you want and uh, just keep a little spray bottle of water ready in case you get too much color on it so that you can just thin it with adding some water okay so now it's dry and i'm ready to start spraying my background color and i just do it like this and then i use my water spray and i'll let it just run of course i need some more water if you think there is too much color somewhere you can just blot it off using a paper towel and i just been tipping it like this trying to get the the color into the crevices and like i said if you don't have a, a color spray just mix some acrylic paint in water because your uh, canvas is and your your texture is protected by the mod podge or gel medium so it doesn't matter if it gets really wet it can take it because of the mod podge so i'll leave it to dry so now it's time for some modeling paste or whatever kind of texture paste or like um, heavy bodied acrylic color whatever you want to use just make sure the the color fits your project i'm going to just use this cream colored um or whitish polycolor 3d paint and this i'm just putting it randomly around the edges when I tap my spatula like this it gets even more texturized so now this needs some time to dry and while I'm waiting for my canvas to to dry I have just uh, picked some ephemera that I want to use that will match the colors of my project so this is ephemera from ephemera's vintage garden and uh, I'll put a link to her Etsy shop below. I really love these little birds and um, I, it's, she sells digital downloads so that you can just, just print them and resize them however you want and use it in your project. So really love her ephemera and uh, images. So that's that. And also I have uh, found some net fabric. You can, if you don't have something like this or some kind of a curtain fabric or, or something you can use cheesecloth we're going to to layer that like i have done here on my canvas and this is really stiff because we're going to sort of soak it in uh, mud podge or glue so i'll just continue to pull some flowers and stuff to to use while i'm waiting for my canvas to dry so I've printed my image onto a uh, heavyweight paper, but still I think it's a bit too flimsy for my liking. So I'm going to glue it down to some other heavyweight paper. So you just do that until you're comfortable with the, the weight of it, you know, and uh, I'll use the same glue. You can use Mod Podge, gel medium, as I said, whatever you prefer. And I just first cover the the paper and I also cover the back of the girl and I just place her down and just gently press like this then I'll do oops <laughs> don't do that <laughs> 
over the edge, isn't it? Okay. Over the top. And I just go over her. I have an ink jet printer, so I can't do this too much. Otherwise, the colors will start to smear. But just trying to, you know, get rid of the, the ugly brush strokes like this. She's now covered back and front with um, gel medium. When she's dried, I'll just cut around her. I have decided to keep my embellishments in fairly neutral colors. There will be some green, there will be some cream, a little bit of pink and white. So I've made this bow with lace from my dear friend Annie, Miss Garden Grove here on YouTube. Hi Annie, thank you so much for the beautiful lace. And uh, I have used a um, very primitive bow easy to make this. Just cut from heavyweight chipboard. You can make your own like this. And there is a great tutorial on how to tie the bow and I'll link to that tutorial below so that you can tie your own beautiful bows if you don't have a bow easy and you don't know how to use it or whatever. So that's my bow. So I also uh, got a little bow from my stash and I'm going to glue this down in her hair like so. So while I'm waiting, I'll just uh, puzzle my flower spray. As you can see here on this canvas, there is a, a spray going off here. And I start with the, the longest piece first. And what is the longest here is the, the bead spray. I'm using two different sprays here. have them so then I want my rosebud this is a wild Orchid crafts rosebud and the number is on the screen I just twist the stem like so and then I want my other rosebud to be a little bit further down so I just position it and I twist. When I make my flower sprays, I start at the top and I work my way down. And I want to use one of the Cosmo Daisies. Just uh, watch the screen for item number. And I'll also put all the item numbers in the description box. Then one of the trellis roses. I want one of those daisies here. And one of the lilies. All from Wildwood Crafts. So that's uh, there's also a room for one more like this down here i think okay so just like i did the last time on this canvas i'm going to use one of annie miss garden grove's handmade flowers that she gave to me for the center so here i have it and this is one of the little flower pearl centers from Wildwood Crafts. I'll put in the item number on the screen and the slider buckle around it. So I'll glue this down and this will be 
like the, the center of my flower spray. And as you can see, because the stems are a wire, you can bend them to go where you want. So, and as you can see here, I also have a little spray on the other side of the fabric rose. And now we'll make that. I'm using the Tuscany rose buds. And again, this will be long, the longest one and I start twisting. This beautiful rose here. And of course, if I find my sprays are not full enough for me, then I will just add some flowers and glue them down. But you can see my sprays here now. Aren't they beautiful? So this will be here with a feather and then the bow. Much like this. And here you can see I've added some flowers afterwards and some charms. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, now it's glue gun time. <laughs> this is where you can use your tacky glue if you don't have a glue gun. I have a glue gun, thank God. I'm addicted to my glue gun. Like so, and then I'll attach my feather. like this and I'll attach her bow I'm trying to do what I can do while waiting for things to dry because it's so boring I hate waiting so when I see this together I have decided I might be coloring this I'll definitely be coloring coloring this um, piece of lace because I will be going across here and it needs some color because i'm going to put this white down in the background and to make it stand out more i'm using forest moss distress stain for this and before rubbing this on i'm just going to to take this to the sink and make it wet now that it's wet i'll just go ahead and rub the distress stain on the lace. Uh, later on, if I think that this also needs color, I'll do the same thing to this one. First, I need to glue down this and I will just make a, what you call a hot mess. <laughs> with liquid glue you need liquid glue for this you can probably use watered down elmer's glue or something but what you want is to really soak your fabric with the glue <clears throat> and then place it on your canvas cut off and clean the edges here after it's dry okay so this is now dry and I had to wait overnight so what I would recommend is that uh, if you use like cheesecloth or some kind of netting fabric like I have done or net fabric I'm not sure what it's called in English but then just use your glue gun put some dots you know around the edges and here and there to crumple it up and attach it because ooh, who has the patience i don't to, to you know wait that long 
for this to dry. So I would recommend don't do it my way. <laughs> I will certainly not do that the next time. I want a piece of lace in the background like so. Uh, you might remember I colored this, but I think this sort of just, I don't know. I guess I'm liking this one better, this color. So I'm just going to cut up a piece. Burning the edges a bit just to uh, keep it from fraying too much. And uh, now I'm just going to glue that down. I also want to use a piece of the uh, Wild Orchid Crafts flat back pearl trim, this one in the cream color. And uh, I'm putting the, the item numbers in the description box. So I'm gluing this piece first onto the, the lace and then I'm gluing the whole thing down. And I want my lace to just overlap the image a little. So I'm going to attach my image first. And as you can see, because of the, the Mod Podge, it has warped a bit, you know, but that doesn't matter because it's going to give dimension anyway. And I am just going to attach it with my glue gun to certain spots behind here to hold it down. Okay, so this is not going to, it's not supposed to lay flat at all. So that will be done first. I, a lot of times I will do things in the, the wrong order and uh, make things difficult for myself but you know it only makes you creative and find better solutions and you know learn probably hopefully <laughs> something till the next time so don't be afraid of your mistakes just do your best and correct them as you go because a lot of times your so-called mistakes will turn out to be just you know add something really special to your piece oh and uh, by the way if you're not happy with how your edges are just use your glue gun and fix it so now the placement I'm not placing it center because my decorations will go up the side so I'll put it a little bit over to the side and I'm checking my flower spray just to see that it's not like too much over there. So I think this is okay. So I'm starting by attaching the air. And because this is uh, a bit stiff now, I need to hold it down for the glue to work properly and, um, and hold. So just make sure you have the right side up on your lace before you glue down the pearls. And instead of putting the glue on my lace, I put it on the back here. And then this pearl string here can just be cut using scissors. like so so let me pick this up for you and show you that there's pretty much dimension going on here let's start our spray um, and i'm also having this in the center so yeah i'll attach these two together Okay. 
and here also because i'm using quite a lot of i'm hoping you can see this quite a lot of uh, hot glue i have to hold it because it takes a bit of time low temperature he uh, glue gun not a high temperature okay so this is now like so and it's going to be probably up here and my bow will be below here yeah that's it then i can attach this so um the thing here is i'm going to try to keep my glue to the the stem the, the in twined is that what it's called the, the stem here and the back of this flower and i'm going to work a little bit fast because like i said low temperature and dries quicker and this i'm going to glue down here so I'll just put a, some glue on the back. I have my other spray, my bottom spray, which I want to go here. And I'm going to try and place it, I think, like so. Okay, so. I think this is, this is nice. So, you see, it's really fast to do this as long as you finished your background. Because it's all the waiting for the, the things and mediums to dry on the background. That's really, you know, the hardest job or the hardest part of doing this is waiting. <laughs> yep. Okay. You see, I do this all the time. Glue things to my glue gun. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I think that uneven numbers are most of the time better. You can you can create groups of threes or fives or you know, but when you go fours, I don't know, and I don't want to put something more pink in, so I'll probably go with the, the brownish or reddish brown. Okay, but I love this little bird. What can I do to touch add this little bird to this maybe i'm going to add him down there mm -hmm. fussy cutting When I, when I don't see like the, the placement I want of it or the use I want of it right away, I wait. I don't, you know, attach it and tear it or I try not to. Sometimes I do, but that drives me crazy. So I got this butterfly off eBay. So let's uh, have a look at my well look at craft charms just a second so this is also a well look at craft trim and i want to just cut two flowers out of this strand real nice 
So here are my Wilder Good Craft Charms. I really love clocks. And for this piece here, these are more suitable. These are more like uh, steampunkish. And that's one <laughs> fun one. <laughs> so that's my solution to the center here. I'm going to cut up this with a plier. Let's like so and it will go there I like it when, when things go a little bit over the edge here and there and I'll put this one down here Okay, now let's add some sparkle. Uh, for my sparkle, I'm using this Golden Mica Flakes Small. They are Mica Flakes mixed in with golden gel, so it dries clear. And I use the silver, or what, let me just check what it's called. It's called pearl micas on this piece but it's it's more of a, a silver sparkle and this has got warmer colors so that's why i'm going for gold on this one and i just add it randomly around the sides if you don't have this because this is pretty expensive anyway and uh, if you don't have that you can use any kind of glitter that you have uh, and uh, I'm sure you are much more used to using glitter than I am. Uh, but what I would do, I would just mix my preferred glitter with some uh, like Mod Podge or something or some gel medium and do the same technique that I'm doing for this. But of course, if you want to put down your glue first and then go over with, you know, the glitter, then just do what you prefer. Okay. I'm just using my spatula. And I will also add a little bit to the flowers. I still haven't forgotten about my little birdie. <laughs> Sorry about my sniffing, and it's just cold. 
Okay, so now the glitter has dried, as you can see. And uh, I was, uh, I had a title on my first canvas that I made here. But I actually don't want a title on this one. But if I was going to have a title, I would put it the same place down here. Because if I put my title here, then what you'll see is that my canvas will become bottom heavy. Because then my my title and my embellishments on this side will be, you know, just the same height. And I don't want that. I want them to go like so. Otherwise, I could have put uh, a title here, but I have these beads, the bead spray here. And so I would probably end up covering some of the words and stuff. So that would not be functional, really. So that's my canvas. And I really hope you like it. Thank you so much for following this tutorial. And I really hope you'll create your own canvas and share it with us. Because I would so much love to see what you come up with. So thank you all and have a good day. Bye-bye.